Hey, I just want to let you know that this video is part of a larger course called Operating Systems 101 on CyberTrainingPro.com. So if you enjoy the content, you want to see the rest of the course, or you want to see other courses that we have or our career services, make sure to check out CyberTrainingPro.com. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. All right, let's get started. For this video, we're going to focus on DHCP or the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So we're going to walk through an installation. We're going to talk about configuring and managing DHCP on a Windows Server 2022 installation. As far as dependencies, you do need a Windows Server 2022 installation. Whether that's physical or virtual, it doesn't really matter. If you're not sure how to create a virtual machine for Windows Server 2022, make sure you check out that video first. You also need administrator level privileges on that server. Now the server that we're gonna use, it does have Active Directory domain services installed, but that's not gonna impact our ability to install DHCP. It's still gonna be required that we manually go through the process because it does not automatically get installed. Now the first thing that you have to do on your server is you have to actually assign a static IP address. So there's two different ways that you can do that. If you're in Server Manager, you can go to the Local Server tab here, and you'll see your network interface here. It says IPv4 address assigned. So you can click on that, and that's gonna open up this interface. The other way that you can do it is if you go to the Start menu, and you type View Network Connections, that's gonna give you the exact same interface. So you're gonna select your interface, you're gonna right click and select properties. Then you're gonna select IPv4 and then select properties. So we're gonna change this to use the following IP address and we're gonna fill in an IP address here. If you click on the subnet mask, it'll automatically populate and then we're gonna fill in the default gateway as well. Typically it's gonna be a dot one address and then for the DNS server, because we already have DNS installed on our server as part of the Active Directory setup, that's why we have the local host here. Otherwise, you could enter this in as well. We're going to hit OK on this. And we're going to hit Close. Now, I recommend that you restart your server first before you continue. One of the problems if you don't restart first is that you might still get an error saying you don't have a static IP address. And that's why I always recommend that you restart for this. All right, so once it's restarted, you're gonna go ahead and log back in. Now we need to install the DHCP role. So in Server Manager, we're gonna to go to Manage and then Add Roles and Features. We're gonna select Next on this first screen here. We're gonna select role-based or feature-based installation, and then we're gonna select next. You have to select your server that you're gonna install it on. So we'll do that and select next. Now we're gonna select DHCP server. And then you wanna make sure that this checkbox is checked to include management tools, and then hit add features. And then hit next. We're not gonna add any additional features, so you can go ahead and hit next. This just tells you a little bit more about DHCP. We'll go ahead and hit next. And then you wanna make sure that this checkbox to restart the destination server automatically if required is checked. So we'll check that and then we'll say, yes, we do wanna allow automatic restarts. And then we'll go ahead and hit install. All right, so the installation succeeded. We'll go ahead and hit close. And then you'll see up here in the server manager, you have this notification section. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And then you need to complete the DHCP configuration. So we'll click on that. We'll go ahead and hit next on this first page. Then you have to provide credentials to actually authorize the DHCP server and Active Directory domain services. So we're using an administrator account, so that's good. We'll go ahead and hit commit. All right, so that says it's complete. We'll go ahead and hit close now. All right, so at this point, I would recommend that you go ahead and restart the computer just to make sure that everything is in working condition. So we'll do that and we'll check back in after that. Are you tired of overpaying for cybersecurity training? Are you interested in training from industry professionals? Are you looking for cybersecurity career services? 
If you answered yes to any of those questions, then CyberTrainingPro.com is the perfect platform for you. At CyberTrainingPro, we're a one-stop shop for all your cybersecurity needs. We can train you for industry certifications or just improve your overall knowledge and skills in a certain area. Unlike other platforms, we don't stop there. We can also coach you throughout your career, practice your interview skills, or create a high-performing resume with our career services. CyberTrainingPro.com isn't just another training platform. Students get exclusive access to our private community where we go beyond training courses to provide additional content, tips and tricks, and engagement with both other students and staff. Look, by the year 2025, there could be as many as 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity. With so much opportunity, why not maximize your career potential with a platform that cares about your success? Come join us at cybertrainingpro.com and start building your future today. All right, so at this point, you've installed the role for DHCP on your server, but you haven't really done that much as far as configurations. So now we need to actually configure the DHCP scope. The scope is the amount of IP addresses or the range of IP addresses that are going to be distributed out to any clients that are receiving that information from our DHCP server. So in Server Manager, we're going to go to Tools, and then we're going to select DHCP. So you'll see we have our server over here. So we'll click on that to expand that. And then we'll click on IPv4. What we want to do is right click on IPv4, and then we're going to select New Scope. We'll select Next on this wizard. And then it's going to ask us to name our scope. So we'll type Test Scope as our scope name. And then we'll put a description as well. And then we'll hit Next. Now this is gonna ask us for our starting IP address and our ending IP address of our scope, so that range. So we'll put a range in here. And then we'll also ask us for our subnet mask. We're good with a slash 24 subnet, and we'll hit next. So now this is asking us about exclusions. So any IP addresses that we wanna exclude from that range, we're not gonna exclude any. We're gonna go ahead and hit next. This is gonna ask us about our lease duration. So how long do we want computers to keep the same IP address before they go to renew an IP address and either get the same IP address or get a different IP address? We're gonna leave this as the default, so eight days, and we'll hit next. And this is gonna ask us if we wanna configure the DHCP options for the scope now. We're gonna say, yes, I wanna configure these options now, and we'll hit next. This is going to ask us about our router or default gateway. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Typically, it's going to be a dot one IP address. So we'll hit add and then we'll hit next. It's going to ask us our parent domain. So because we already have Active Directory domain services configured on this server or on this domain controller, it automatically brought in demo.lab, which is our domain. So we'll leave that as configured and we'll hit next. This asks us about when servers. We're not gonna fill anything in here. We're just gonna hit next. And we're gonna say, yes, I wanna activate this scope now. And we'll hit finish. All right, so now that scope is active. So one of the things that you have to do on your client systems is you have to make sure they're configured to receive DHCP information. So this is a Windows 11 system. We're gonna click the start menu and we're gonna type view network connections just like we would do on a server and we'll select that. And here's our interface. We're gonna select that and we're gonna right click and select properties. We're gonna select IPv4 and then properties. You can see I have an IP address that is configured in here statically right now. I'm actually gonna change this to obtain IP address automatically because that is going to get the information from our DHCP server. So we'll hit okay and we'll hit close. Now it's really important that you're gonna do that on all of your systems. I didn't change the option for DNS servers, but of course with DHCP information, that can provide DNS information as well. So you would really want to acquire all that information from DHCP, but I just didn't do that for this demo purpose. So I'll go ahead and open up a command prompt window. and I'm going to type ipconfig. So you can see 
that this IP address for this system now is .150. That is not what it was statically configured for because now we're receiving that information from our DHCP server that is pulling IP addresses from our DHCP scope that we just configured. Now let's talk about DHCP reservations. So reservations are useful because you can assign specific devices with fixed IP addresses every time they connect to the network. For example, you might want a specific set of servers to have specific IP addresses every time, that way clients can easily find them. So to do this, we're gonna go in Server Manager, then we're gonna go to Tools, and then DHCP. We're gonna select our server on the left-hand side here, then we're gonna select IPv4, then we're gonna select our scope, then we're gonna click on Reservations, and we're gonna right-click on Reservations and select New Reservation. So I'm not gonna fill this out right now, but this is where you would fill this out if you wanted to reserve a specific IP address. So you can give it a name, you give it a specific IP address, you give it the MAC address of that device, you can add a description, and then supported types, either DHCP, boot P, and both. Now let's talk about DHCP exclusions. So exclusions are gonna remove IP addresses from a DHCP scope. This means specific IP addresses aren't gonna be passed out to clients. Common example of using exclusions is if you want a certain range of IP addresses statically configured on servers, then obviously we don't want to pass those IP addresses out to clients and create issues with that. You can configure exclusions after your DHCP scope has been configured. So to do this, we're going to go into Server Manager and then Tools and then DHCP. We're going to select our server on the left here. Then we're going to select IPv4. Then we're going to select our scope. Then we're going to click on address pool and we're going to right click on address pool and we're going to select new exclusion range. This is going to make us give an IP address range to exclude from the scope. So we're going to enter this in and we're going to hit add. We'll hit close. So now 150 through 160 are going to be excluded from what's passed out to clients from our DHCP server. Now you're much more familiar with how DHCP works on Windows Server 2022. We walked through how to install DHCP. We walked through how to configure a DHCP scope. We talked about reservations and we talked about exclusions and how to configure them.